So since we're on the topic of filters, I want to show you how to combine filters and layer masks for some extra special effects in your uh, Photoshop files. I'm going to go to File and Open, and I just noticed in my demos before, in the previous videos, I had my folders labeled as 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, for some reason. So don't be confused by that. I just went back and renumbered them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So really doesn't matter about the numbers. You're looking at the names here. Just wanted to call attention to that. But in Chapter 7, I'm going to go to Folder 4 and open up this picture of this dragonfly that I took. I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see a little bit of workspace here. And what I want to do is add an artistic effect around the edges of this photo. Every Photoshop file is going to be in a hard cut rectangle. That's what Photoshop files are. They're like cut out photos. But I want an artistic effect to this photo. Okay, I cannot achieve that artistic effect when I have a background layer. So I'm going to double click on the name background and call that dragonfly. That's what's on the layer, so that's what I'm going to name it. Okay, what I'm going to do is take my rectangle marquee and I'm going to start about an inch in from the edges and I'll click and drag. Okay, I'll make a little border effect like that. You can see it right there, in from the edges. Okay, what I'm doing is when I select an area, I'm telling Photoshop to protect that area. That's why I selected it. I selected it because I like it. I don't really care about what's going on outside here. So when you have a selected area, and then you come down and add a layer mask, Photoshop is going to protect the selected area. Click. And it's going to temporarily delete everything outside that I didn't select because Photoshop thinks he doesn't care. That's why I didn't select them. So we're going to delete it. Okay. What you need to be aware of is that everything on a layer mask is pixels, just like your photograph is pixels. So first, in order for us to see things more clearly, I'm going to add a brand new blank layer and I'm going to tuck that under the dragonfly. I can double click the name, call that black layer. I'll hit return to accept the name, D for default colors, and I'm going to hit option and delete. I'm just going to fill in a layer so I can see the edges of my photo more clearly. Okay, really important here, go back to the top layer and go to the right. You got to be on the layer mask. You can tell you're on a layer mask because you can see a white frame around the mask. So make sure you're on your layer mask. Okay, and what I'm going to do is apply a filter to that. Instead of this photo just looking like a hard cut, smaller photo, I want to soften up the edges. So even though I'm on a layer mask, I can still go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and I'm going to crank this way up to about a hundred. Okay, get a nice soft blurry edge to that photo and that looks good. Okay, but I want to combine another filter on top of the blur filter. So this takes some practice because some filters work, some ruin the photo. Like for instance, I've blurred the edges but if I went to filter, render, clouds, it would ruin the whole photo. The whole layer mask became a big cloud filter. So that is obviously not what I want to do. Edit and undo. I'm going to try filter, distort, and glass. And what the glass filter does is it affects transitions of color. Notice it's not applying to the black, it's not applying to the white, it's applying to the values that are changing. I knew to pick that because that's with practice. I know that's what the glass filter does. So now right over here, I'm going to set the texture to tiny lenses. 
I'm going to set the distortion way up high. We'll go to about 19 right there. Smoothness, I will set to the left. I don't want them to be smooth. I want them to be nice and rough so people can clearly see them. And the scaling, I'm going to drag this to the right to about 140. I really want these things to be big so people can see these little lenses. When I click OK, now we've got this type of effect around the edges of our photo. And they just kind of fade back out into the black. It's applying just around the outer edges of my photo. When you get a soft edge transition like that, it's called a vignette. Okay, but in, in addition to that, I'm going to add one more filter to these little lenses. Filter menu, distort, ripple. Okay, and what this is going to do is show you the old fashioned um, filter box. Okay. That's why usually you get the big filter gallery, but this goes back to the old way of doing it. The problem, and this is why they got rid of this for most of them, is you don't really see anything, okay? What I'm looking at right here is the very center of my layer mask. So what I have to do is click and drag it way down and let go, then come back in, click and drag and let go, click and drag and let go, click and drag. It's kind of annoying. Okay, I can hit the minus right here to zoom out a little bit so I can see that corner, but you got to drag it into view and that's annoying. I'm going to set the size of the ripple to large and you can see what it's doing here. If I zoom back in, it's taking every one of those little tiny lenses and rippling them, tearing them apart to create this really unique texture. So when I click OK, it'll do that to the edges of my photo. And there is not one filter that can achieve this type of rough effect. It's through a combination of filters to achieve that effect. So filters take a little practice, but filters can play off of other filters and create a really cool look like this. So just be aware, filters can work off of other filters. Filters can also be applied to layer masks. You can get some pretty cool photo effects if you know which filters to combine. Look forward to seeing what you come up with.